I'm going to show you how to paint trees in watercolour in this step-by-step -step landscape tutorial. Let's get started. So let's get painting. I'm using some cobalt blue here, nice big puddle. And now I am mixing up some cadmium yellow pale, another big puddle, always make plenty of paint. I'm now mixing up some burnt sienna. I've wet the paper by spritzing it. You can also use a large brush. And I've started off with the yellow, painting it in the center with a large flat one inch brush. And now I'm painting around that with some burnt sienna. And now I've loaded my brush. I rinse the brush, then load it with the cobalt blue. So you're actually mixing the colors on the paper using the bullseye technique of the wonderful artist, Nita Engel. And I did publish a tutorial recently using some of Nita Engel's techniques. I'll put a link for that in the description below. I'm just making the cobalt blue slightly creamier to make it slightly darker as I go around the edges there, still using that flat one inch brush. Now, this is the trick here. This is the fun bit, tilt. The tilting will help you mix the colors on the paper. And you notice that the colors don't turn green, the blue and yellow don't turn green because I've got the burnt sienna in there protecting the yellow paint and the blue paint from turning green. So just keep tilting till you get the colours blended on the paper and then allow your painting to dry. Once your painting is dry, I've mixed up some ultramarine and a little bit of cadmium yellow pale. I'm painting wet on dry with my size 10 round brush on the left hand side. So this is a blue green, it's a cooler colour and because it's further away, it'll sort of give the illusion that those trees are further off in the distance because it's a cooler colour. So I'm just painting this along here, the smaller trees to the right hand side. Adding some quinacridone gold now to the ultramarine and painting this wet into wet at the bottom of the trees on the horizon using that size 10 brush and just dropping in that sort of lovely mid green here and there wet into wet. I've added a touch more ultramarine here just to make it slightly darker painting that wet into wet. And as you can see there, the sort of blue green color fades off a little bit in the distance and it creates some depth there. Adding that sort of mid-tone green to the left there, wet on dry, and then dropping in that darker mix, wet into wet. So just sticking with this ultramarine and quinacridone gold. If you don't have that color, you could use a little bit of raw sienna or even cadmium yellow. So it's a really nice way of painting trees here, wet into wet, nice big brush, big shapes. Added a little bit of burnt sienna to the ultramarine there. Really lots of ultramarine, quite creamy, quite dark there to create some shadows in the tree area, damp into wet. And I'm using some more quinacridone gold, adding that into that green there. So quite a golden sort of earthy green color here, painting it wet on dry in the grasses here on the left hand side, still using that size 10 brush. So getting a little bit more of that dark green, painting that damp into damp just on the edge there. Bigger marks in the foreground and smaller marks as they go off towards that vanishing point and slightly paler in color as well. So you can see I'm making the marks bigger and darker there in the foreground area as it goes off into the middle ground. So I've mixed up here some Prussian blue with some burnt sienna. Quite a creamy mix and I'm painting this damp into damp here with my size 10 brush, mostly in the foreground and middle ground. I'm using a brush here to splay out the hairs, to use it like a fan brush. And this is for those of you that may not have a fan brush. If you do, you can try this technique. So I'm stippling with the brush using this dark green. That's the Prussian blue with the burnt sienna. And this is wet on dry, going in to damp into damp there. Um, just below and I'm stippling now with my size four brush as well here and there to paint these trees now that are sort of to the left here they're quite large trees and that's the ones the trees where they're going diagonally to the vanishing point so they'll get shorter and shorter as they go off into the distance so these are the trees that are the tallest 
just adding this detail, stippling here. So it's quite a nice way of painting trees, starting off using a fan brush or creating and making your own, splaying the hairs out. And what I'm doing now as well is I'm using the belly of the brush and I'm tapping onto the damp surface with the damp dark green paint to build up that foliage there, to create more depth, to bring these trees forward. So there's not much paint on my brush now and I'm using dry brush. Now, if too much paint comes off on your brush, just wipe the excess off on a paper towel. But I'm sort of just sort of combing those brush hairs against the dry surface here, using the tip of the brush as well to create smaller trees in the distance, but with a little bit of texture using that dry brush technique. So I am lifting off some grasses here with my plastic card so the paint is damp and not wet. I'm also doing the same with the foliage creating the look of tree trunks and branches here just in the foreground area to the left. I'm also spattering with my size 10 brush some of that dark green paint damp into damp. So while that's drying I've mixed up some burnt sienna to the right there. I've mixed up some ultramarine here with quinacridone gold. Plenty of paint and I'm using my large one inch brush and I'm painting wet on dry and then spritzing with my spritzer bottle to soften the edges and tilting as well. Going back in with this sort of mid green paint, painting wet into wet with the large brush. It's always quite nice to use a large brush because it really frees you up. So use the biggest one that you have. Really load it and paint on the greens. You can paint a little bit of wet on dry here as well. I've added some more ultramarine and it's literally on its own. I'm painting it on top of that mid green damp into wet. So the surface is wet but the paint isn't as wet more creamy paint adding a little bit of the burnt sienna in there as well now and what I'm trying to get is the look of the bushes the grasses here etc and I've mixed up some quinacridone gold painting it on the edge of the path here still using that one inch brush again it really frees you up tilting as well onto the wet path. The path at the moment is reflecting the sky but I plan to paint some washes on top soon and I've mixed up some creamy Prussian blue with burnt sienna and I'm painting this with my size 8 brush damp into damp and it's just to really separate some of these bushes here and there. Remember in the foreground make marks bigger and darker and as they go off into the distance smaller marks, smaller spaces in between as well and also lighter marks and that way that creates depth in your painting. It's called aerial perspective and I'll put a link in the tutorial of a video I made all about using aerial perspective. And that's creating textures, size, colours, etc. to create the illusion of depth in landscapes to make a 2D surface look 3D. So I'm adding a little bit of mid-tone here on the left hand side, damp into damp. I'm using a little bit of quinacridone gold here with a tiny touch of ultramarine and painting damp into damp with my one inch brush on the left hand side. Adding a little bit more mid green to the left there, painting wet into wet. I've mixed up here some burnt sienna and I'm using some Prussian blue to make a lovely dark green. I've actually added a little bit of Payne's grey in there because I think I've ran out of Prussian blue. And I'm spattering this wet into wet right in the foreground there to create that texture and those darks and I'm spritzing with my spritzer bottle and tilting just to tilt that down to create some softer marks. I'm going to use some salt now I'm sprinkling it onto the damp surface and I will allow that to dry naturally and I'm using the plastic card again just to lift off a few more tree trunks and branches to create some light and details there, especially in the middle and foreground. Spattering again, can't help myself here, just to create some more textures, especially in the middle ground and foreground. Spattering here in the foreground, using my size eight brush, 
using that lovely dark green, the Prussian blue and burnt sienna with a touch of Payne's grey. I'm actually scratching into the surface of the damp or wet paper here to create thin dark lines. The paint runs into the scratches. Now this is permanent so you may want to practice this beforehand. I'm spritzing again just in the background there where the vanishing point is, letting the paint run down just to create a little bit more light there. I felt I lost my light a little bit and I'm just picking up the paint there at the bottom with my paper towel. Going back in with that mid green, you can use the ultramarine with the quinacridone gold. And I'm painting it wet in wet here with my size eight brush, just to create a sort of a bush there in the distance. I really wanna lead the eye to that vanishing point in the painting. So I'm just painting some of that sort of mid earthy green here. That's the ultramarine with the quin gold and using the size eight brush, painting wet and wet, just to kind of break up the bushes there. Remember the bushes in the distance will be smaller, the gaps will be smaller and the ones as they come in the foreground will be bigger. So just painting a little bit of foliage on the sort of road there as well, just building up that detail gradually to sort of start off with those wet and wet washes, the damp into damp, the spattering, the salt, building up the details here using darker washes, describing the scene. You can be quite loose with this. You can let it dry and build up more and more wet on dry to make it look more realistic. I like to go for a little bit more of an impressionistic look, a little bit of abstraction here and there as well. So I've added some more Prussian blue, as you saw there, and a little bit of burnt sienna and just painting this dark green now, sort of blue green just along the path there and then tilting and spritzing just to soften things. I don't want to get too tight. I want it to be quite loose and atmospheric. And I've lifted off some of the paint there so I don't lose my light. Spritzing some more there, picking up the paint there at the bottom with my paper towel and I'm going to allow my painting to dry naturally. I've decided to include some people in my painting. Try to keep the heads around the horizon or above the horizon and remember to make them really, really small. You can always make them bigger, but it's a lot harder to make them smaller. Little arch windows for the coats or jackets and long, thin triangles for the legs meeting at a point and make sure one is shorter than the other and a little arch window for the dog with little pointy ears. And you can put in the elbows and arms as well, keeping it really simple. So I'm painting the cobalt blue here. I am using my size eight brush, painting wet on dry, painting a very thin arm there, working my way down to the bottom of the coat. And then painting literally two thin lines, one shorter than the other, coming to a point for the legs no feet, remember. Red coat here and doing the same thing. Two thin lines, sort of very thin triangle lines, wider at the top, really taper off at the feet area. And do practice that. Painting the little dog now, wet on dry. It's just a small arch window with little pointy ears. And again, sort of have one sort of back leg shorter than the other. So he looks like he's walking. I took off a little bit of paint there to create the look of light on the left hand side, the lights coming from the left, so shadows on the right. So I'm using a little bit of alizarin crimson with ultramarine there, painting damp into damp. And I'm painting some shadows on the ground using the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine wet on dry, just adding a touch more dark there, slightly thicker paint directly on under their feet where it would be a bit darker. And here's a little close up there, keeping it really simple. Remember, they are far away, so less is more. What I'm doing now is I am painting the branches and tree trunks of the distant trees that I painted right at the beginning using that ultramarine with a little bit of yellow wash. They're really sort of cool trees that recede into the distance to create depth. Using my size four brush, I am using ultramarine with a pinch of burnt sienna. It's not too dark. I don't want it to come forward. And I'm just keeping these super loose as well. Not too much detail. Detail. I don't want them to come forward, but I want to give the impression of these sort of distant trees, tree trunks and branches here. As you get towards the right hand side, you can go a little bit darker because these trees may be a touch nearer. So I'm just building up a little bit more darker tonal value there. 
and I'm just adding some quinacridone gold here just on the left hand side to add a bit more warmth here adding a few more darks wet on dry just to show sort of describe the path there using my size four round brush especially painting some of those darks in the middle and foreground I just wanted to kind of talk about the salt effect. You can see there, especially on the right hand side of the foreground, there's some lovely texture left by the salt there. And it's left a lovely glow on the path as well with all that spritzing. There's some wonderful salt textures there to the left as well. So that really has done a wonderful job of creating these lovely lighter textures. So I'm going to finish off with some spattering. So I'm using the Cadmium Yellow Pale with my size 4 brush and I am spattering wet on dry. And I'm trying to vary the sizes of the yellow wildflowers here. So I'm going in with my brush and just picking a few of those marks and just making them a little bit bigger. And I'm doing the same along the left hand side. Remember, marks get smaller as they go off into the distance. So I'm spattering a little bit of quinacridone gold here to this sort of middle ground on the right. More spattering of yellow, cadmium yellow pale here and there. I always love to do this because it gives light texture and a bit of sparkle, but it also stops me from overworking my painting. I'm adding some birds here in the distance, again varying the sizes, so some larger birds, smaller birds, and that creates depth as well. So the ones going off in the distance really look like they're much further away because they are smaller in size. And I'm finishing off with some white gouache here with my size 4 brush, painting wet on dry to add a few highlights to the left hand side of the people and the little dog to finish off my painting. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to support the tutorials I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below, but you'll get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials, lots of bonus content and downloadable outline sketches. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting. Bye for now.